It really pains me to say this, but the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV might just be the biggest flop of 2022. Hear me out. So there's always a winner and there's a loser whenever it comes to phone awards and a lot of good phones out there this last year. And here's the thing. I think the Xperia 1 Mark IV is a pretty good phone, but when you look at it for $1,600, it's not that great. And and I didn't pay that. I wouldn't pay $1,600. I paid... So I paid like $1,199, $1 $1,170, something like that for mine when I first got it. And then within the return period, it dropped down to $1,000. So I got mine for $1,000. I think it's a good phone for $1,000. Got a lot of great things going for it. It's got the cinematic aspect ratio. It's got the 4K screen. It's got the built-in fingerprint sensor into the power button, which I love. Continuous zoom. 120 hertz refresh rate. It starts off with 265 gigabytes of storage. Expandable storage. You can pull the tray out with your finger, which is nice and easy. You don't need to use the SIM ejector tool. It's got a headphone jack, lightweight, 5,000 milliamp battery, great camera skill set. But the actual camera app for the point and shoot, not so good. Oh, it does have the upgraded selfie, which is very important. The selfie is much better than the Xperia 1 Mark III and II. But for $1,600, it's just not the greatest, especially considering all the heat issues that it had. Had a lot of heat issues, especially when it came to the camera, especially when it came to recording. Even on 1080p, if it was hot outside, it would shut off on me and I would get overheating warnings all the time. I have never had a phone in my life overheat so badly when using a camera, which is terrible because that's the whole reason to buy this because you're essentially trying to get the Sony Alpha camera experience and a smartphone. So this is designed for enthusiasts and amateur photographers and content creators and has some nice accessories to go along with it, which costs extra money. But $1,600, $1,599, $1,599 plus tax. I mean, that's like an $1,800 phone. That is a whole lot of money. That's basically just a, like $100 cheaper than the Fold 4. And I think we can wholeheartedly say that the Fold 4 is probably worth a lot more to most people than the Xperia 1 Mark IV. Now, if you love this phone, if you love Sony, it's probably gonna be a phone that you like. It's definitely, capabilities-wise, the best one that they've ever made. But because of their boutique style of making these phones, they don't put them on shelves, they sell them online only, very small presence, slow rollout for launches, they don't have the greatest software support in the world. I mean, you're getting two or three years, instead of most phones, they're now getting three, four, or five, or even six years if you look at Apple. So. I love this phone. It's my favorite phone of 2022, and it's odd to sit here and say that this is probably the biggest flop of 2022 when it's my favorite, but on the same token, for most people, it doesn't provide a lot of value, and I think most people will be disappointed if you go and pick it up to take shots with it because if you take shots with the regular camera app, point and shoot, it has very, very low ranking, especially compared to other phones, and the quality is not that great. Now, if you go into the Sony camera app and you adjust it manually, which is why you would want this. You want this phone for manual photography mode. You're going to adjust the ISO. You're going to adjust all sorts of different things, the white balance and the zoom and the focus. And it's got the dedicated shutter button on here. There's so many things that you can do with this that are impressive. I like it a lot. I mean, it, it's got the different focal links for the different zooms on it. So it's very, very cool. Some thoughtful technology here, but at $1,600, it leaves a bit to be desired. And just me speaking here, I like to try and advocate for value. I try and advocate for people and getting the most bang for your buck. I would say to 99% of people, go buy the Pixel 7. And the thing is, is the Pixel 7 is 99% of the time going to take a better photo. <laughs> Even if you go in and you know how to do all this stuff manually, that does give you more control. You can take better photos in certain situations and scenarios but most of the time when you're taking a photo point and shoot selfie camera regular video or even just taking a shot with your camera you're going to get a better one with the pixel 7 i mean even the pixel 6 averaged out and beat it out i mean point and shoot just a regular shot on a camera the pixel 6a with last generation's pixel camera at i bought mine well i didn't buy mine but you get it for 299 it's normal msrp 449 you could basically get like four or five of those suckers for what it costs for this. You could essentially outfit your a family of five when the Pixel 6a was on sale for the price of a Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV. So I like, I like the phone. I think there's a place for it, but Sony needs to provide more value. They need to invest more in it. They need to give longer support. They need to work out these heat issues. And I made a video the other day talking about 
how they need to fix the Xperia 1 Mark V because from every indicator, it looks like they're keeping the same form factor. I love the form factor, but it's bad for heat because it's very tight, very thin package, and it doesn't have anywhere for the heat to go. They only have the passive heating, which, yeah, the heat piping, whatever they have in here is just not adequate enough, especially when you're shooting video, especially any length of video, especially if it's hot outside. So I love the phone. I think it's a great phone, but when you stack it up and you take a look at dollars, you take a look at capabilities, you take a look at other phones that are out there, and it was really a good year in a lot of instances for 2022 for phones, I kind of got to hang my hat on this one and go, this is probably the biggest disappointment or flop of 2022. Now, other people have talked about other phones, like throwing out the OnePlus 10T out there. At least that's the one that MKBHD, he's the big tech guy in YouTube. He said that one was the biggest flop, which I disagree with. I think the 10T is actually a very good phone and price wise and performance. And they just want a different angle with it. If you want to get a OnePlus phone that's going to excel at gaming, excel at heat management, has okay cameras, it's going to give you a couple years of support, that has a beautiful screen on it, and super, super fast charging, there's a lot of stuff there to talk about. And I think that at the price and what it has to offer, I think it's a pretty good phone, even though it doesn't have the mute switch slider on the side, which I could really care less about. But I, I'm hopeful for the Xperia 1 Mark V. I think there is a place for the premium Super premium phone, especially for camera enthusiasts, especially with the Sony Alpha name attached to it. I mean, shoot, you can do 4K at 120 on here. 4K, 120 frames per second. That is smooth. You can crop that. You can slow it down. You can do so many great things with it. You can even use this to live stream with using YouTube. I, you can you can direct stream while you play video games on here. And, and the funny thing is they actually have a gaming apparatus you can connect on here. Bypasses the overheating. You can plug it in while you play it. You can connect the LAN to it. You can connect the headphone jack to it. I may have to get that because it turns it into basically like an eSports gaming phone, which I never saw coming when it came to a Sony phone. But it's really kind of a neat apparatus that they have. And it really changes a lot of things. And they've also got the little handheld thing. They've even got the little monitor you can use with it. There are a lot of thoughtful design attachments you can get for it, but that just ramps the price up even more. And if you're going to be spending like $2,000, I mean, shoot, go get an A7 S, right? Or maybe even the A7 IV might drop down. Go get a Nikon, was it the 6V or something like that? There's so many, or Panasonic S5. There, there are so many different cameras you can get. Heck, you could go buy a nice DSLR camera and also buy a Pixel 7, <laughs> probably cheaper than you could pick this up. So I like it, but just because I like this phone and I like it a lot does not justify its existence or overlook the problems or mean that it's a good value to most people because it really isn't, even though there are a lot of things to like about it. And like I said, it's also purple, <laughs> which goes a long way. I like purple lights, purple phone. Uh, there's a lot of cool things. I really do like this phone, but if you sit at it and looked at it, look at it objectively, yeah, it just doesn't offer a lot of value. And the other thing, too, is when it comes to the camera, one of the reasons the camera suffers is because Sony likes to do it on natural. They, they want to manpower this with actual optics as opposed to relying on computational photography and post-processing. So the magic that is Google Pixel and what they do and what Apple does with their phone and the other phones that are out there that really rely on the camera app and a lot of the processing and a lot of stuff that happens after you press the shutter that makes the photos look really good. Sony doesn't rely on that. They rely on actual, the lenses. And they want it to take the best real photo as possible. And if you really know what you're doing, you can push the envelope and you can take some amazing photos with this. But that's not most people. And most people I would not recommend this phone to. So that's all I've got. Uh, what do you think? Do you think this is the biggest disappointment or flop of 2022? Do you think it's a good phone? Do you think it's worthwhile? I mean, I know I do. I, I love the phone, but for most people, it ain't it. It ain't, it ain't the right one. And there's a lot more value in other phones than this one. So that's all I've got. If you have any questions or comments, then please go down in the comments section. I'll get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys next time.